Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Monday. Happy President's Day. I'm here with my Devonshire cream tea. And I thought I would do a little cup of tea video with you and kind of tell you where I've been and what I've been doing. I have been very busy in my classroom over my journaling class. So that's why I haven't been doing as many YouTube videos. But I'm going to try to get you some more this week and next week. But today is just a little chat about what's been going on. I've been uh, enjoying the weather. I dressed for spring today. I'm determined that it's going to stay around. But I just want to tell you about what I've been reading, uh, what I bought, and kind of just what I've been doing. So I'm going to first show you what I have been reading. I just finished the book, uh, The Mad Woman Upstairs. This is by Catherine Lowell. And this... This was a fun little book. It, um, I had a hard time getting into it at first, but then about halfway through, you know, I've been telling myself to at least try to read 100 pages of a book before I DNF it. And I'm glad I did on this one because especially in the end, I really enjoyed some of the thoughts. But this is about a girl who's the last descendant of the Brontes. And her father died, but he was very much into um, their history and teaching it to her. And then he basically, to me, kind of left her a scavenger hunt after he died. And she went to Oxford and had a professor that was tutoring her. And I, I just love the main character. She is so snippy and, and, and sarcastic and full of life. And I, I really enjoyed her. So I, I gave it a three and a half stars. I, I enjoyed it. Um, would I reread it again? No, not unless I'm reading like some of the Bronte's books. And what I'm wanting to do more this year is companion reading. Like I have Charlotte Bronte's biography that I found secondhand. And I, I don't think I've ever read Jane Eyre. I know I haven't read Wuthering Heights. I'm not even sure if I'm interested in that one. But I also have The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. And I'm going to start reading those because I read this and kind of uh, group these books together so that they have more meaning. So anyway, yeah, that was that was good. That was a library book. Um, actually, all these are library books. Now, the other book that I've been enjoying is fashion illustration art. I've been trying to get into, well, for, for well, I don't know, two or three years now, I've been working on my... Um, girls faces I call I call them my ugly girls but I can just show you one so I've been I've been enjoying that book and then I started this book at the library and I know it's really popular on booktube home fire by Camila Shamsi Shamsi um so yeah I started reading that at the library and I'm like okay I want to check that one out so I checked that one out now, this one, Cannabis for Chronic Pain. I live in a state where marijuana is not legal, but this is an interesting book, and this book is just not only about cannabis. I, I was reading it last night, and it goes into all your the different pain that you might have, and it, it tells you a holistic approach to it. Like they have back pain, uh, migraine, headache, fibromyalgia, uh, cancer, and they also, if you are wanting to get into cannabis, it tell they go into detail telling you what tinctures you should use and the amounts of certain things. Um, and, and they're pushing a little bit their own product, but not like some health books. I have learned so much through this, and I really enjoyed their chart telling you what to do to start detoxing yourself from um, from the foods that cause inflammation and he tells you how much you should be uh, taking of each of those vegetables and then of course it, the foods to avoid so this is this has been a great great little read and then on that same subject healing arthritis this one to me really pushes a lot of um, her stuff her whatever she is that she makes it up I mean I've I've learned some interesting things like how to heal the gut and she goes she goes into a lot the science behind what is happening and why you get arthritis which has always been fascinating to me because I have osteoarthritis in my facet joints and my hips so yeah so this one's this one's been good I haven't read all the way through it yet I've I've read a lot of it but 
yeah, that's been very eye-opening. Now, the other two are Christian books. I'm trying to get into more Christian reading. Uh, this one, Prayers for Victory in Your Marriage by Tony Evans. Now, this is just a little book, and I could probably get through it in a day, but I just, I wanted to, I wanted to read you the beginning of it and then one other thing that I, I, I really like it. If you're a believer and you are married, you're in a battle whether you realize it or not. The battle is for your unity to be destroyed, your love to be diminished, and ultimately your marriage to fail. Marriage is a foundational covenant created by God through which he manifests his presence and power in a unique way. Strong marriages lead to strong families. Strong families raise up strong next generation, up a strong next generation. Satan would like nothing more than to do what he did in the Garden of Eden, tearing apart the family unit by inciting blame and undermining trust and respect. We all know what this led to, the removal of Adam and Eve from the Garden and later the murder of one of their children by a sibling. To say that spiritual warfare happens in the home is an understatement. The home, and particularly marriage, is a hotbed of Satan's tactics and techniques. Whoever owns the family owns the future. You can see why the devil would like to bring destruction to marriage. I just thought that was so perfect for our the day we're living in and the shootings, that shooting just down in Florida and you know, they, they've taken God out of schools and God out of everything and no one's at home watching and teaching the children and they're all on computers playing violent games and watching violent things and we wonder why we're in the mess we're in. It's not a mystery to me. But anyway, I'm really excited about this book. Now, I wanted to read you. This just real, this really hit home to me. He's talking about praying. Remember as you pray that you do not pray as a beggar, but as a warrior warrior for the king of kings that that was powerful for me so yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna get through that one this week and then the other one is the beauty of intolerance by josh mcdowell and sean mcdowell i'm interested in this because we all hear tolerance diversity you know and the gist of it is called setting a generation free to know truth and love basically it goes into that we all don't have our individual truths. There's one truth. And I, I, I'm so ready for this book after um, all that we're, is pushed down our throats to be tolerant, you know, for deviant behavior and whatnot. And I know I made people get, get people unsubscribe and that's okay. I don't care because I, I'm, I feel very strongly about this and I feel like it's, our country, countries are in a, a mess, and a lot of it is because of the, the way we are going. And anyway, I'm really excited to read this book. So I'll, I'll be giving a review on this one. So that's kind of what I've been reading. I've been, this, I did a lot of art this weekend, um, prepping for my classes um, this week and next week in my February journaling class. I'll leave a link below if it's something you're interested in. And then the other thing is I had heard, let me take a sip of tea. I had heard that Hobby Lobby was having a clearance sale. So I went and got me some rubber stamps, $1.65, one of my, $1.62. One of my students showed me these stamps she got and it made me run down there like I need more stamps. But I love this one. I'm so glad I got this bicycle one. I absolutely adore bicycles. And then I, I'm looking for fabric to put in my studio here for over the curtains. And I found this and I thought it was going to be so perfect. I absolutely loved it. And I figured if it wasn't, I could use this in a, a junk journal. And I'm not for certain on it. My, my room is very bright and uh, it's got the turquoise and aquas and hot pinks. And somehow this back tone is very muted where like my uh, blinds and everything else are white. So I'm still, what you do, and this is what I taught in my interior design business, I'd leave my clients their, their, the fabric sample books and I'd say, prop it up and live with it for a day or two and see if you like it and you'll know if that's the fabric for your curtains or your draperies. So yeah, so that was fun. And then the other thing I got, I purchased the new Vibrant Pink Lamy pen and the cartridges that go with it and I love it I love the way it writes I love the tip it's 